Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. This video is going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one. I uh, want to quickly shout out our sponsor in this video, the good people over at The Ridge. They make these nifty metal plated wallets that fit nicely in your front pocket. They're minimalist in style, and you can get 10% off your order of one or whatever else you want to grab on The Ridge site, hitting up the link down below using promo code MELON. All right, Queens of the Stone Age. Legendary California stoner rock and alternative rock band going through every major studio album in their discography and, and putting them into, into, not this, this tier list over here, essentially ranking their albums uh, from worst to best, in my view. Uh, we're going to start with the band's earliest record, and... Uh, this whole thing should be pretty self-explanatory at this point, so let's do it. We have uh, Queens of the Stone Age debut record over here. 1998 album. We have Josh Homme and company essentially rising out of the ashes of, of Caius. And as you can kind of hear in their transition into a new group, into a new musical venture, uh, there's certainly a lot of those stoner rock elements left that, of course, obviously, you know, never left in the Queens of the Stone Age uh, discography. But this is not a pure expression of stoner rock, those heavy, sledgier, uh, hard rock inspired riffs. I mean, obviously, again, those influences are here. But Queens of the Stone Age is a much different musical venture in that the songs, of course, feature some heavy and hard hitting and groovy riffs. But uh, they're a little more song oriented. They're a bit more tuneful. The alternative rock influences, I think, lead to a lot more um, straightforward and, and clear structures to the tracks on this record. And it's not a bad album. There are a lot of good tracks on this record. You could say that right out of the gate, uh, Queens of the Stone Age didn't come out with their best record, but they were sounding very good. Uh, the riffs are great. The tunes are solid. The production is very good uh, for a band's debut album, though, again, that probably has a lot to do with uh, uh, the incredible amount of experience everybody in the band had going into this record. But still, for a debut album, it sounds very, very good. Um, Queens of the Stone Age are essentially a well-oiled machine at this point on this thing. So what, what are the issues with this record, though? I would say in comparison with the rest of the Queens of the Stone Age discography, it's it's very plain. It's very it's very meat and potatoes. It's very basic. There's not a whole lot of crazy bells and whistles. I wouldn't say the songs on this record are incredibly dynamic or anything like that. Not nearly as dynamic as the songs on like uh, like Clockwork. Not nearly as dynamic as the songs on a uh, um, Paralyze. Uh, not nearly as hard hitting or as humorous or as exciting or as sinister as any number of tracks off of Rated R or um, uh, Songs for the Deaf. So this record to me is a solid record. It's a listenable record. It's an enjoyable record. Uh, nothing on the album in terms of like, oh, this song is like pure garbage, the worst track they've ever put out. You know, no nothing, nothing quite that bad. Uh, very solid listen. Uh, I would put it very uh, uh, firmly in the B column. Mm -hmm. You know, not not the most special record in the band's discography, not necessarily a high point in their discography, but still an, an enjoyable project um, that uh, is a little one dimensional, but uh, but still, you know, a, a good listen for any Queens of the Stone Age fan. I wouldn't say it's the first record you have to listen to, but once you've, you know, heard Songs for the Deaf, once you've heard Rated R, and you're looking for more, it's kind of a must. You know, it's it's kind of the next place to go. Uh, unless you want to hear, you know, Queens of the Stone Age get a little weirder, a bit more experimental, I would say go further into the discography. If you want to hear more of just the riffs, the straightforward tunes, uh, that kind of balls to the wall rock attitude, listen to the debut. All right, next one in the list here, we have Queens of the Stone Age with their record Rated R. This one came out in 2000. I very vividly remember um, uh, a friend of mine being uh, deeply obsessed with the song Feel Good Hit of the Summer back in the day. And it, it was a very catchy song and like a very... Uh, um, 
I, I, I guess, a career-defining single for Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, if, you, if you haven't heard it yet, it's this um, really great, straightforward kind of alt-rock track, just listing off all these different <laughs> drugs and everything. But uh, Rated R is definitely a more solid record than the debut, in my opinion. It's a more versatile album. There are drearier tracks on here. There are tracks that are a bit more low-key. And on top of that, there are a lot of cuts toward the back end of the project that are just distorted as hell and extreme and just like screaming their brains out. Like there's definitely a lot more, um, if I didn't say it already, I probably did, but versatility to this album. Rated R obviously isn't a progressive rock album. It's still very much solidly in the garage rock, alt rock, stoner rock camps. Uh, but still the riffs are a bit flashier. Guitar playing is a bit more dynamic and nimble and, uh, engaging and the drumming is definitely more expressive a bit more muscular just the production quality the humor uh how great the flow of this record is which i think you know can definitely boil down to the versatility of, of this batch of songs it doesn't feel like you're kind of hearing the same idea just looked at from another angle for track after track after track after track i will say there are a few tracks in the track list that maybe are a bit underwhelming don't hit quite as hard it is a uh, i think a bit difficult to find some common ground between the more extreme cuts and the more mellow cuts on this thing. I think Queens of the Stone Age were yet to find or would, uh, with their next record, find a production style that would kind of thread through perfectly every track on the entire album. Uh, that wasn't quite the case on Rated R, but Rated R is still a fantastically performed, fantastically written, and uh, sharp set of tracks. Um that I can't really say anything bad about. You know, it's just a really great rock album uh, with incredible guitar tones, it's very heavy, it's very ballsy, it's very in your face, lots of attitude, it's very catchy, uh, it's it's very solidly in the A Row. for me. Very great record. Would highly recommend it to anybody curious about Queens of the Stone Age. A few years later, we had Queens of the Stone Age releasing their 2002 album. Uh, here we go, Songs for the Deaf, which is kind of their breakout record, not simply because of uh, the fact that it is so good, uh, but in the band's career, you did have them re release what is essentially uh, their biggest, biggest, biggest single ever, No One Knows. You also had Dave Grohl drumming on this record, which are around this time in the 2000s, if you had Dave Grohl drumming on or endorsing anything. It was, you know, basically like God touching your record. <laughs> Everything that I was talking about on Rated R is, is here on this record. But there are a few things conceptually and, and sonically that I think make this album special. For one, the title is, uh, <laughs> the title is not a lie. This is literally one of the loudest rock albums that you will ever hear. Uh, it's loud almost, I, I would say, to a fault, because as much as I love this album, it's it's been rare that I've gotten a listen through this entire thing and, and not sort of like either had a bit of an adjustment period because it's been a while since I've listened to it or I've come out of it with a bit of ear fatigue because it's literally that loud. It's literally that bricked out. Uh, this is not just like some kind of edgy title that the band threw on just to be like, oh yeah, this will this will sound cool songs that you listen to for the deaf. No, like this is like literally one of the loudest rock records you're going to hear ever. I mean, from the moment the first riffs and, and vocals and uh, and drums on um the second track on this thing hit, it's just <clears throat> just like we're firing on all cylinders. It's just high volume, high distortion, high intensity, but still, uh, even with all that noise and all that extremity, the tracks are still really catchy. Uh, and obviously the band knows when to ease it back a little bit and deliver a track that's a bit more uh, eerie, a bit more mellow, a track that has like a really great solid hook to it. So there's a bit of sweetness to that aggression on the album, again with No One Knows, also with Go With The Flow. Um, there are moments on this thing that, again, call back to stoner rock, call back to garage rock, even call back a little bit to the Stooges in a, in a very creative way. Um, Josh's vocals are fantastic on this record. The drumming is obviously the best it's ever been in the Queen's discography so far up until this point with the songs being better, the production being more creative, not only in terms of the volume, but there are like some really weird 
production decisions made on some of the tracks on this thing that definitely add character to the record. Don't ruin the album necessarily. There are moments where uh, um, the vocal harmonies are thrown together in a very odd way where the drums are like mixed to one side of uh, the entire mix. Uh, <laughs> some very weird ideas, but you could tell that... Um, you know, a, a lot of what was happening here was just like, let's just try this. Let's just try that. Let's just do this. And there were so many unconventional concepts going into the production of this album that f it, it just kind of adds so much character and, and makes this so unique, even though in a lot of respects, it's, it's a very bare bones and back to basics rock album, but kind of like upping the ante in terms of the attitude and noise and intensity uh, that has sort of been a cornerstone of rock music in no matter what era uh, it's existed in. So this thing is a badass pedal to the metal mixture of, of rock genres. And uh, uh, again, songs great, performances great, production incredibly interesting. And uh, it's definitely worthy of all of the praise that it has uh, accrued over the years. And even with more than a decade you know, almost two decades at this point of time under this album's belt, uh, it still sounds like nastier than ever. It still sounds nastier than ever. So I would solidly put this in the S column. It's a special record. It's a fantastic record. Let's move into a section of the band's discography that a lot of uh, Queens of the Stone Age listeners see as like, oh, we're, we're going down now, we're going down. And I, I do think that is true in, in some respects, but I don't, I don't think that's the full, the full story. Sure, Songs for the Deaf is arguably Queens of the Stone Age biggest and best record, their, their highest point of success. But I think Nearly everything they've dropped since that record has uh, still quite a bit of artistic merit to it. So 2005, Lullabies to Paralyze, uh, very solid record, but it's, it's still kind of a question of where does a band go once they've come out with one of the most extreme and hard hitting and, um, you know, impactful rock records uh, of the decade. And for Queens of the Stone Age, I, I guess the answer to that question was to essentially reel it in a little bit and pull back and maybe not go so hard on the volume and the distortion the next time around. And that's what Lullabies to Paralyze is. And that's not to say that the record is just like super mellow or easygoing. It's still firmly sitting in all of the genre types that Queens of the Stone Age have uh, been dabbling in up until this point. Lots of stoner rock riffs, Lots of uh, uh, sweet and badass vocals all over the record. But Queens of the Stone Age start to incorporate, I think, more melodic vocal leads, eerier vocals, just like stranger, more mysterious and uh, creepier textures into the songs they're pulling together. And I'm not saying creepy in the sense that like, oh, it sounds like a Halloween song or a Halloween tape or anything like that. But there's definitely something much more forlorn and tortured about the songwriting this time around. But it's still, again, firmly a visceral and, and kind of aggressive rock experience. It's just not as hard hitting or as intense as Songs for the Deaf to explain it in a way that maybe some listeners will be able to connect with a bit better. Um, I would say that a lot of what the band was trying on this album would be stuff that they would eventually perfect on like clockwork, more dramatic melodies and, and vocal styles and, uh, you know, instrumental palettes. It's easily one of the most dynamic records that Queens of the Stone Age have, have come out with. But for Queens fans that love the first leg of their discography that kind of came up listening to that and, and are maybe only used to the band doing one thing or sounding a certain way, uh, I, I could see why some of them might think this album is a departure, even though in many respects it's sitting in the same stylistic wheelhouse that it's always been, but it's just more mature this time around. Not a bad thing. I think it's a solidly a, a B record. It's not um, an album that that I would come around to first, though. You know, I, I would I would say it's more of a uh, once you hear maybe at least a few of the first couple of records that Queens have put out. Uh, you know, it's it's definitely an album that you come back to and, uh, you know, sort of appreciate you know, a little bit after the fact. So, all right, moving on from there, 
Let's go to Queens of the Stone Age's uh, 2007 album era, Vulgaris. This is a record that uh, many fans have sort of uniformly agreed is, is one of the band's worst. It's not one of their best records. Though in my view, Queens of the Stone Age have uh, never come out with a garbage album. They've never come out with a garbage record. So even though this may be perceived as one of their weakest uh, it's it's all kind of relative at the end of the day, because truly and honestly, there's nothing really unlistenable about this album. I could see why maybe some more stubborn and narrow minded fans might feel that way. But this is still a very quality album. The thing with Era Vulgaris is that, that Queens, for their time, I guess you could argue that um, that Lullaby is to Paralyze uh, even though, again, I think a lot of those ideas they perfected on like clockwork in, in that moment in their discography, it, that was kind of experimental for them. They were experimenting, they were trying new things. And I think era vulgaris pushes even further in that direction. It is a more experimental album, even more experimental, even more unorthodox. The production is noisy, uh, probably to most fans, to a fault. The uh, a few mixes here are like very abrasive, very muddy, not in the same way that Songs for the Deaf was, uh, but in a way that feels kind of weird and unorthodox. You could tell the band was like really throwing caution to the wind on this one. And not only um, <laughs> pulling together some very odd mixes on this thing, but also some of the zaniest guitar licks, some of the funniest and weirdest and most tongue-in-cheek vocals to land on any Queens of the Stone Age album. You could also tell, I, I guess, in a way that the band wasn't taking themselves too seriously on this one. Not to say this record was a joke, but again, it's like there were no inhibitions going into some of the recordings on this album, and as a result, uh, the, the songs and the performances and the ideas presented are kind of wild and are just off the rails. And I think that makes it, even though it may not be one of the best Queens of the Stone Age albums, uh, I think it makes it one of the most interesting. So I think there are some fans that, that may sort of tier this or rank this as a C or even a D record. And I don't see it uh, that way at all. I think it's uh, you know just as quality as as the debut at least. Uh, but the thing is, it's it's quality and it's entertaining for me for a totally different list of reasons than I think uh, uh, any other Queens of the Stone Age album is. Like it's uh, enjoyable in my view because it's kind of freaky, because it's kind of unorthodox, because it's just kind of weird. Um, I think that quality about it just adds to the, again, I'll say entertainment value and, and just generally what makes the album special. Is it a flawed record? Are there some tracks that are duds? Are there some ideas that are just sort of thrown out there that aren't that great? Yeah, sure. There are some uh, risks on this thing that don't pan out just like on the debut. There are some ideas that are plain just like on lullabies. There are uh, some... I guess, mellower tunes that just really, truly underwhelm. In my view, uh, some of the most popular tracks off of the album, like the singles, um, uh, Threes and Sevens and, and Make It With You, uh, to me, these tracks, they're fine, but they don't really fit in with the rest of the freaky and, and oddball ideas presented on the rest of the album. You know, if, if there's anything that sort of... Um, ends up kind of kneecapping this record for me. It's that it's it's not consistent enough in that oddity. And, and you could tell that, you know, the, the band started to present some tracks that uh, sounded a bit cleaner and sounded a bit more orthodox at, at a few points during the track listing, I guess, to uh, kind of make it sound more coherent and make it more palatable to fans that were kind of expecting a certain thing up until this point. But still, Era Vulgaris, I think, is a very solid record. It's a very fun record. There are some ideas and risks and strange concepts on this thing that put that put a smile on my face because it's like, wow, they really like, <laughs> they really tried to do that. So uh, I, I think this is solidly a B record. I think it's a good album. I, I think putting it, personally, I think putting it anywhere under that is like truly underrating the album. All right, let's move on to uh, the band's record. After that, which uh, came out in, in 2013, uh, one of the more positive reviews on my channel 
in general, as I uh, gave this one a nine that year, it's uh, like clockwork, which I'll say one more time, a lot of the eerier, more melodic and more instrumentally varied tracks that the band presents on Paralyze, uh, I think they kind of go back to a lot of those concepts on, on this one. And uh, they do an even better job with more dramatic instrumentation, more compelling, more memorable songs. This record is lavish. It's gorgeous. Um, easily Queens of the Stone Age's most mature album, most thoughtful and, uh, you know, moving instrumentation. This thing is dreary. It's weary, but it's also got cuts that just like really, truly hit hard and present some uh, great riffs, great vocal performances. Yeah, it's just incredibly well put together, very well written, very well performed. Uh, I would say that, um, you know, it's not the most novel or groundbreaking rock record of the bunch. I mean, certainly a lot of the ideas presented on this album, Queens of the Stone Age, have explored to a degree before. And, uh, you know, even in 2013, this was not like the most novel sound that uh, rock music has, has ever presented. But uh, still, the production is fantastic. The songwriting is great. And it's just a very quality album. You know, it's a, a regardless of... Uh, how new any of the ideas on this thing are. Uh, Queens of the Stone Age still bring a very distinct sound, and um, uh, everything else about it, I think, is done incredibly well. So, you know, there's not really anything I can I can truly uh, uh, fault this album over to a, a great degree, honestly. Uh, I think this is solidly in the A column. It's easily one of the band's best records, even though it's not entirely representative of what many fans see as, as you know, their classic songs for the deaf sound. Uh, I don't think this is a bad album to start out with either. Uh, I think for a lot of newer fans, uh, I think the more tuneful approach that the band takes on this record uh, certainly going to be a uh, palatable and sort of, you know, an, an easy in. Let's, let's leave it off with the record that Queens have come out with most recently, that's Villains, uh, which dropped in 2017. And my review on this record wasn't uh, the most glowing. I happen to think that Villains is one of the most, or rather the most underwhelming record that Queens of the Stone Age have ever put out. Uh, and uh, I, I think that's basically twofold. You know, the, the issue is twofold. The tunes are kind of run of the mill, not anything too special for Queens of the Stone Age, but I, I think the Achilles heel of the record is that the recording and the mixing isn't very good. Uh, I feel like it leaves a lot of these tracks feeling very muddy, very gray, very flat, very lifeless, and, and not muddy or oddly mixed in the same way that Era Vulgaris was, where just like everything is, is so uh, noisy and intense. And, uh, and sort of weird, not in the same way that uh, Songs for the Deaf was. You know, to me, uh, Villains feels very neutered in a way, sonically. And I don't know if they were maybe going for something more interesting. Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure, but whatever it is, I, I don't think it fully panned out on this record. Again, not an album that I would categorize as being purely terrible or just like throw it in the garbage. It's just like the worst thing I've ever heard. I, I don't think that. I think it's a likable album, but in order to appreciate it or get much out of it, I think you have to have already sort of enjoyed everything Queens of the Stone Age have done up until this point, you know? So I, I think it's solidly a C record. I think it's a C record. And I think I am going to leave it at that. So these are the Queens of the Stone Age albums tiered. My Queens tier. And uh, you're the, 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 you're the best. Um, let me know down in the comments where you would tier all of these records and what maybe some of your reasoning is as well. And over here next to my head is a, another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Queens of the Stone Age, forever.